If you're looking for a mini PC to play games on, we usually recommend a Ryzen, and they can actually be quite expensive. So what we need is a company to sell one for cheap. One second, there's something on TV. $2.99. Subscribble. This came in the post. Another box from GMK Tech. This one is the M6 model, 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte storage. This has been sent to us in purpose of video review. No cash has been exchanged. And as always, we'll like to keep this as bias free as possible. And there it is. We've had a few GMK Tech PCs on this channel and this one is stuck in there pretty good. Is this your first time? No, it's not, John. In an out. There we go. So in the box we get the mini PC, card with a manual inside, and it's in multiple languages, showing the specs, and simple things such as how to connect your new PC up to the monitor. At the bottom of the box there are two more boxes, and this one came slightly banged up, and inside there's a 1.5 meter HDMI cable, a base mount allowing us to attach our computer to the back of a monitor or desk, and a cable for the power brick. And as we're in Japan, we get the US standard. In the other box, we have the power brick, and this one's by Hunky, delivering power via DC jack. It's the same one used in other GMK Tech Ryzen mini PCs, and they've been rather good. It outputs at 19 volts, 6.32 amps, at a maximum of 120 watts. And we also get a card. Boy. At first glance at the specs, it's pretty jarring to see a 6-core Ryzen when 8-core is the norm, but we do need to understand that the 6600H runs on the Zen 3 Plus architecture, giving us more power and efficiency compared to the 5000 series. Other specs seem identical to the K-series of GMK Tech Mini PC, including the DisplayPort, in case we need that 144Hz on the ultrawide 1440p monitor. But its biggest draw is the price. The one we're using here is $340, the one with half memory and storage is $299, but if you want to provide your own OS, storage and memory, you can get the bare bones model for $230. So here's the M6 and it's fairly non-intrusive. There's a logo in the center and the case is made of a hard plastic. We can see that this is a Ryzen 5. And this case is very similar to other GMK Tech PCs sold in the last year. Meaning there's a secondary fan at the top, keeping the insides nice and cool. On the front we've got a BIOS reset pinhole, a power switch, 3.5mm headphone jack, ports for USB 4 Type-C, and two USB 3.2s. On the side we've got holes for cooling, with the gratings to filter out the dust. And on the back is where all the action is. There's USB 2, USB 3.2, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0, two holes for 2.5GB Ethernet LAN, and DC input for the power. Underneath that we have an exhaust for cooling, and just next to that, Kensington. Kensington! Yeah. Yes, Kensington. On the other side we've got more air holes, and they continue underneath, with holes for vase mount and nicely sized rubber feet. It's about time for the size comparison. The GMK Tech M6 is around four times the size of the G5. It's much smaller than the Ace Magic AD08, but what we've noticed is there are actually many mini PCs of a similar size. It might be due to standardization, tax brackets, or in the case of GMK Tech, they're using the same cases over and over. And this mini PC is around four Robosh tea bags big. Once we hook up the mini PC to a monitor, speakers, keyboard, and mouse, we can get cracking. We do need to let Windows know our languages, things like that, but around five minutes later, we're free to do as we like. It's the usual GMK Tech affair, where we get Windows 11 Pro, and the system is free of viruses and malware. Around a week ago we compared this computer against some others, showing benchmarks and tests in many popular games. Even with 6 cores, it can compete against the 5800H, besting its score in multiple situations. But we still need to remember that this is a budget mini PC, so in 4K resolution we don't get full speed in Dave the Diver. As the Steam Summer Sale is now on, I decided to have a look through my Steam library and play some of the games that have been gathering some digital dust. Gonna be here for a while so I've got a cup of tea, and some snacks, and let's get to it. This game, released by Subset Games in 2018, is pretty much what you get if you mix Front Mission with that Tom Cruise movie where he keeps dying. You get to control three units that are sent back in time, and it's played over a series of set pieces, much like playing chess with mechs. 
Each battle has a clear objective. For example, this mission is supposed to protect the train. Victory! But in this game, you'll die again and again. It's a pretty good game, but I'd say only pick it up if he goes on sale. Next up is Convoy, and for this we'll be using the mouse. This one's by Convoy Games, released in 2015. In this story-driven roguelike game, your ship crash lands onto a planet, and it's your job to lead a crew to find the missing pieces so you can fix your ship and go back home. It plays much like a choose-your-own storybook, and gets interesting when in vehicle combat. In this Mad Max-inspired world, you need to allocate resources for repairs, upgrades, fuel, and also be careful as permadeath is a feature of this title. Even though the graphics aren't exactly amazing, I spent hours on this and beat the boss. Great game. In the 90s, I was a huge fan of the XCOM series, and in 2013, Irrational Games released the Bureau, which was quickly forgotten. Set in the 60s at the height of the Cold War, the Bureau follows the story of William Carter and his portrayal of how aliens took over the government. The game itself is pretty much a mix between Resident Evil 4, L.A. Noir, and what feels to be a rather forced-in splash of XCOM for the battle sequences. Don't know if you can tell, but the controls here are very clunky. But while the blend kind of works, it ultimately falls flat, very much like what happened to the series after XCOM Apocalypse. Originally, this intended to be a reboot of the franchise, but it feels more like weak source Resident Evil 4. As we wanted to play a decent XCOM game, let's try one that has some great reviews. This one is XCOM 2, which is the direct sequel of the 2012 remake by Firaxis Games. But rather than tread the same path that we had in the 90s, this sequel continues the storyline of what would happen if XCOM had lost the alien invasion. Rather than start out with immense support, you're left with the task of gathering it, with the whole world under alien control against you. The turn-based tactics formula follows closely to the original, so you research, manufacture, and recruit others to join your cause. Varaxis did an amazing job with the customization, so you can bring you and your friends into battle the alien scourge. Needless to say, this game is highly recommended, and if you don't have it yet, it's currently in 95% off. While that game was pretty awesome, we also tried out Fallout 76. This is an online MMO based on Fallout, released in 2018 by Bethesda. At release, this game got some fairly negative reception, and we can see why. While it looks quite nice and plays well enough, it lacked any direction or story. Fetch quests set in the post-apocalyptic wasteland, with only Fallout lore as foundation, make this rather soulless and a bit of a snooze fest. To show you how slow this game is, we walked into this bar, and I waited here thinking this was a load screen. After 25 seconds, I decided to move, and this happened. Lady, I will paint the walls with you if you don't tell me where Crane's treasure is- Hands to the floor! This the is a stick down! Either way, we don't recommend Fallout 76, as any other game in the franchise is much better. So let's take a look inside. It's quite easy to open, all we need to do is pull this lid off. Now we can see the upper fan. In each corner there's a small posi screw. Then using a pry tool or guitar pick, we can pull off this layer. As written in the specs, there's two sticks of DDR5, and these go up to 4800 mitts. There's also two slots for NVMe, and the storage came with a heatsink already attached. This one included is from AirDisc. We've seen these included in Chewy Mini PCs. We'd have preferred it if they used something a bit more reliable, such as Lexar or even MSI. And here's the Wi Fi module by MediaTek. Here's the BIOS, and it's only available in English. The Power Mode Select changes our TDP and fan profiles in case we need a bit more power, but the BIOS is very similar to other GMK Tech Mini PCs we've had on this channel. If we connect our Batasera SSD via USB, we can successfully load up Batasera Linux. And we can report that Batasera 39 has no issues with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth on this mini PC. 
And again, power is very similar to the 5800H, so we can play some upscale PlayStation 2. Some more PlayStation 2. Xbox. And one of the more difficult systems to emulate, Commodore Amiga with Jim Power. We also tried some Wii U. We got a stable 60 FPS from Tekken Tag 2. And while we could emulate PlayStation 3, we were getting some slight frame depths. Admittedly, this was an open GL, and if Vulcan hadn't crashed the emulator, we'd be hitting full speed. In a balanced profile, we're idling around 42 degrees, and the system is very quiet. Here's how it sounds. Pulling 10 watts from the wall. And here it is, under load. This is the Grid Auto Sport benchmark, 1080p medium, and it's a bit louder. Pulling around 80 watts from the wall. It maxed out around 86 degrees Celsius without any thermal throttling. We tried it again using performance mode in the BIOS, but in this case, we couldn't really see any difference between the balance setting. It used a few more watts, and as the fan was spinning quicker, it maxed out at around 84 degrees. A quick check of the Wi-Fi signal strength, we had no connection drops, and a reasonably good 75% signal. And this will also apply to your Bluetooth controller and things like that. It's time for the pros and the cons. The GMK Tech M6 is nice and snappy in Windows. It has decent memory, room to expand with its two NVMe slots. The second fan keeps insides cool, and the display port is a nice solution for the high refresh rate at ultra-wide 1440p. Unfortunately, we'd like to see a more reliable NVMe. The system can get noisy under load, and for most games, we need to lower graphical options to get a nice frame rate. The GMK Tech M6 is a feature-packed Ryzen solution at a budget price. And while you may need to lower graphic options in games, it can play many, including Counter-Strike 2. Here's the summary. Next year